It's Friday's in the graveyard. I love a graveyard, don't you? I'm here at Mount Zion Cemetery in Bayard, Delaware. If you look here, you can see there's almost no graves that have markers, and it is in the middle of a cornfield. There's a few markers. You see how they're propped up? And that's because this is a really old graveyard. This graveyard dates back 100 years at least. In fact, most all of the graves here are from the 19th century. And I'm going to walk over here and stand by the graves of two Lewis graves. They died in the 1880s. And there was a grave right in between them as well. Let's see if you can see it. There you go. You can see the two spikes sticking up out of the ground. That was another grave, but it's since gone by the wayside. And Jonathan, one of these graves is the son of Zipporah Lewis, and her daughters are likely to be buried right in this area. When I did check the headstones out in the cemetery, most all of the families are together. <clears throat> so it's likely that the Lewises are all here. And the one that I want to talk about is Jonathan's mother, Zipporah Lewis, also known as Zippy Lewis. She died in the 1870s. She was in her 70s when she died. And she's really well, she's legendary um, along the Atlantic beaches, um, especially the Delaware beaches around Fenwick Island and North Ocean City. And that's because of the stories that have been told about her for many, many years. Now, Zippy Lewis married a sailor and he would go out to sea, make his money, come back. Um, they'd, when he'd go out again, she'd have to get by on the money that he had left behind. They had five children, three sons and two daughters. And one day, her husband Jonathan didn't come back when expected. And Zippy used to go down to the beach and she would stand up on the highest dune and she'd look out for Jonathan. And he never came back. But while she was looking, she would start to gather junk that was washed up on the beach. See, off the coast there, in that area, there are some shoals, and there were many shipwrecks. And so during storms especially, the waves would turn up the old ship parts and wash them up onto the beach. In fact, they say there was a ship that was wrecked that had a lot of gold coins, and those gold coins would come up on the beach. And Zippy would go down and she'd find the scraps that were washed up, or she might find a gold coin or two, put them in her basket, and carry them back to her little shack. And her little shack, which was not far from the beach, was made of junk. They say it was made of all these little pieces of wood and that she gathered off of the, uh, the beach from the shipwrecks. And she was known for taking, to try and get by, she would sell this junk or things that she found on the beach or use the gold coins that she found to get supplies in the two nearest towns, which at the time were Bishopville and Berlin. She had an ox cart and she'd put all the junk on it and she'd take it to Berlin and she'd sell the wares there or she might go to Bishopville where she had to cross the water. And people say you could see Zippy Lewis poling her boat across Assawoman Bay to get to, to Bishopville to sell her wares. Um, so it was a hard life, a really hard life. They say that Zippy Lewis died by throwing herself into a fire in her house because she was so miserable. But that's not true. It's likely, that, but she did have a fire, but her house burned uh, did burn down, but burned down long after her death. But it's likely that she did um, get burned in a fire because that's written about. Now, one thing most people don't know is that in the 19th century, the most common cause of death in women was obviously childbirth, but the second most common cause of death in women was burning to death or severe burns because women wore these long cotton dresses and they cooked over an open fire. So the uh, bottom of the dress might catch on an ember, ignite the cotton, and phew, the cotton burned so quickly that it would ignite the woman inside and either burn her so badly that she'd die of the burns later or burn her to death in her dress. And it's likely that something like that happened to Zippy. But she went to live with her daughter after that and her house burned down much later. But they say that the burns did weaken her and she got sick a uh, cold that developed into consumption and she died at around age 73. Now she had property when she died and she had a few dollars. She left the dollars to her two surviving sons and the children of the one son who died. He was lost at sea. But all of her property went to her daughters and that was odd for the day. 
So you have to wonder why did she divide her estate and just leave it to the daughters. And maybe it's because she knew how hard women had it if they had to survive on their own. Anyway, why is she so famous? You know, lots of women had hard lives and uh, they aren't remembered like Zippy Lewis. But it's, uh, it's because of this. After Zippy died, she was a very well-known character. And after she died, the light keepers at the Fenwick Lighthouse used to see her out on the dunes in the moonlight. So it's just the shadow. They could see a woman stretching up on the highest dune. And they'd say, that looks like Zippy Lewis, but she's gone. They'd see someone combing the beach with a basket, just the shadow. And this got talked of. Then people started to see Zippy Lewis's shadow pulling her boat across Assawoman Bay like she used to. And even as recent as the 1970s, there have been sightings or apparitions of Zippy Lewis. So that's why she's so memorable. Anyway, this is Mindy Burgoyne. This is Fridays in the Graveyard. And I've enjoyed telling you this story about Zippy Lewis. Tune in next week to see what I've got up my sleeve then. See you next week. Oh, one more thing. They say, if you're around Fenwick and you're beachcombing and you find a silver or a gold coin, Zippy left that for you. Keep that in mind.